You're listening to Cosmic Cousins Soul Centered Astrology. For ground in your ass from all the new age sass, I am your host, Jeff Henshaw. Season 6 of Cosmic Cousins is a bi monthly astrology offering. It's released every new and full moon. And it's dedicated to honoring the interconnectedness of our universal family through embodied health, self-discovery, and deeper learning. Hey, Cosmic Cousins, I am sitting here on my floor on a meditation pillow. I've got my altar set up. It's beautiful because it's the Taurus full moon. I've got all of these different colored roses here. I've got two incense burning, one for the root chakra, one for the heart. And there's some other stuff I'll tell you about my altar in a minute. But we're in Scorpio season, so we're breaking boundaries, right? As we do in Scorpio season, we're setting ourselves free from the karmic chains of cultural conditioning. We like to do this during Scorpio season. We like to feel into our depths, We like to plummet into them like warriors to excavate, to transform, to release. And so Scorpio has been offering us a time to really go internal, especially with this Mercury retrograde. And so we are all in some way intuitively honoring death and rebirth right now. We're all in some way releasing layers of the old. And if we're not releasing them, then we're facing old parts of ourself, whether that's fear, whether that's cultural conditioning, things that are no longer serving us. So all of this is offering us a moment and time to activate a creative transformation. And Taurus, ruled by Venus, is a very creative energy. So we're going to explore that today. And today, as I record this, it's a special day because it is November 11th, which is 1111, which is a powerful day in the New Age community. And it's known as a day for us to take a moment of silence for global peace, to pay attention to the messages around us. So 1111, if you get the chance, if you're listening to this on 1111 at 1111 p.m., you could take a moment of silence uh, to honor global peace. Uh, It's also another powerful day because it's the Kazemi, which Kazemi is when Mercury passes over the sun. So we're in Mercury retrograde, but this is the moment where the sun and Mercury are conjunct. And this is a time, this whole week really, when the lessons from Mercury retrograde click into place. And so this week, all of it is illuminated and amplified by the full moon. Emotions are heightened during a full moon. It can feel like a very expressive time, an outward time. Um, but if you're an empath, it's also a time to really be with yourself because you're being activated. Um, so, But this is the Taurus full moon. So even though emotions are heightened, Taurus is fixed earth. It's our personal conscious earth sign. Taurus is the cow or the bull, right? And so it's ruled by Venus. So we're, we're grounding our transformations, earth. We're grounding our grief and sadness, our darkness, with practicality, with a touch of beauty. So we have sun in Georgia O'Keeffe and the moon in Cher, which is one way you can feel into it. So if you're new to the show, this past year we've been working on a project called Zodiac Queens, and the listeners of the show helped crown a queen for each zodiac sign. Georgia O'Keefe is our queen of Scorpio, is a Scorpio sun, moon, and rising, giving us that intensity of Scorpio. And then Cher, legendary Cher, is our queen of Taurus. And so we're going to feel into this polarity polarity today on the show. We will honor both of these queens to understand more deeply the invitation of this Taurus full moon during Scorpio season. Um, We're going to look at the tarot cards. We're going to go deep, as we always do. And so we have fixed earth is meeting fixed water. And I actually made my first ever meme this week that encapsulates this energy better than I ever could in words. And It's a video clip from The Simpsons, and in it, 
Homer Simpson, who, by the way, is a Taurus. The Simpsons creators released the birth times. Or not the birth times, but the birth date of all the characters. So they must know a thing or two about astrology because they gave Homer Simpson a Taurus birthday, which definitely... He gives us those Taurus vibes. But anyway, in this video, Homer is sitting on the couch drinking a beer, and the doorbell rings, and at the door is Death. He's cloaked in a black robe. He's got his scythe in hand um, and is is ready to kill someone. So um, let's listen to a clip of this so we can hear. I titled this meme, When Taurus Meets Scorpio. So let's listen to a clip of this now. I am death. Death? We don't want any. So as Homer slams the door in death's face, he walks away drinking his beer. This is the the grounded, down-to-earth, practical side that Taurus is offering us to balance out the intensity of Scorpio. So... I had a lot of people comment on this. It's funny because I'll put a lot of work into my post, but then of course when I just post a meme, it gets the most likes and the most comments, but that's just the culture of Instagram. So maybe I'll try to make some more memes. It's not necessarily my thing, but anyway, um, I had a lot of people say, oh my gosh, this is definitely my sun and moon's interaction. I'm a Taurus sun, Scorpio moon, or whatever. For me, I'm feeling into it. I've got the Scorpio midheaven and the Taurus I see. So we're just feeling into this polarity here with this Simpsons clip. And um, yeah, I think at this time, we'll take all of this that we've already talked about and discussed, and we'll go into a little meditation for embodied health. So you can start by bringing your awareness to your body and your breath as we transition into that now. So here on the show on Cosmic Cousins, we always will carve out some time to bring our awareness to our body and to our breath. This is so important in our astrology practice to ground here, to be here on earth, right? Ground in that ass from all the new age sass. So um, for me, one of these practices that I utilize to, to ground my energy is actually working with the tarot, um, looking at the images, having something visual. Taurus is connected to our five senses. And when we connect to our five senses, we elicit our sixth sense or intuition. So Taurus is here to remind us during Scorpio season that as we go through all of these transformations, as we're touching base of these darker parts of ourselves, how can we bring this into more of a ritual through our body, through our physical world? And so building altars is one way that we do that. And for me, it's cool because I have Taurus on my IC. IC is a mum coli. Latin for below the sky, it represents the bottom of the chart. And so for me, having Taurus at the bottom of my chart, it represents my connection to home. And it's really important for me to have flowers in my home and altars in my home. This all feels very Taurian to me to balance my Scorpio midheaven. Midheaven is your public appearance, how you hold space in the public realms. And so as a tarot reader and astrologer, having a Scorpio midheaven, that's how I feel into it. So for you, as we're here in this Taurus full moon, you can look to your chart and just ask yourself, where is Taurus in my chart? What house does it rule? And where is Scorpio in my chart? And what house does it rule? And it will be on the polar side of the wheel, right? It always will. So for me, this is a time of balancing my outward public appearance with my relationship to home. I'm in a new home, but I'm also transforming, hello Scorpio, my offerings, which I'll talk about when we get to the announcements of the show. So yeah, here I've got on my Taurus altar, I have roses, I have my wallet. Taurus is connected to money. And when I look at this wallet, it's actually way more masculine than I actually feel. It's interesting. It reminds me of my dad's wallet. It's like a thick black wallet. So I've got that on there. But also, since it's Scorpio season, we're also releasing. And so I'm releasing my credit card debt <laughs> at this altar. So I've actually cut up my credit card uh, into little pieces and I kind of made it 
in this beautiful, um, like I sprinkled it around the base of the candle that I have lit here. I also have a crystal that was gifted to me by a Scorpio friend. What's up, Tegan? Happy solar return to you. And then I've got my Taurus and Scorpio tarot cards out here. So if you'd like to do this along with me, you can. I have the Venus card, which is the Empress, Taurus's ruling planet. Got the King of Pentacles, which is fixed earth, Taurus's embodiment. And then the Hierophant, which is the soul growth card for Taurus, which is already allowing us to feel into Taurus's connection to a reverent connection to earth through ritual, right? Using the material world around us to um, connect to a higher power. This is the soul growth of Taurus. And Taurus rules over the neck and the throat, so you can breathe into the neck and the throat. If you'd like to take out the Scorpio cards, you can. Um, Death would definitely, as a soul growth there. Also on my altar, I have, um, it's a heart that is has crystal prisms, and it's a coupon for a crystal comb. I got a hair healing session uh, on the Scorpio New Moon with Roxy Darling, who some of you might know as a hair healer in New York City and Brooklyn. And Roxy gave me some hair clippings uh, from the haircut and asked me to sprinkle it somewhere on the earth. So I did a little bit of ritual during the Scorpio New Moon there. But she also gave me this coupon code to buy a crystal comb. And so Venus connected to beauty and self-care. So I've got that there as an intention. Maybe I'll manifest that somehow uh, over the, the coming weeks, you know? So breathing into the throat are phrases that we have for Taurus, I value I manifest, I receive. So if you'd like to write these phrases down and fill in the blanks, I value, I manifest, I receive. Taurus's phrases are so nice. And I I look at them, I look at the three cards we have for Taurus. I value, you can connect with the Hierophant. I manifest, you can connect with the King of Pentacles. And I receive, you can connect with the Empress. So in my own life, I value community. I've been connecting with the yoga community here as I've returned back to New York, which has felt really nice. And also the community that is you. Thank you for tuning in. I value you. Uh, I manifest a beautiful Zodiac Queen's book. That's what I'm putting out here on this Taurus full moon to manifest the Zodiac Queen's book here in the new year. And then I receive, I receive a generous and abundant compensation for my hard work and contributions to the astro community. So I wrote all three of those things down. That's also on my altar. And so for today, for our meditation, as we've got our space set up, um, I'm really excited about this. I, so I feel really relieved and grateful to be reunited with my old companion, which is my harmonium. So if you're not familiar with a harmonium, it is a stationary piano. It kind of looks like an accordion, but it's on the ground. So your right hand you use to play the piano and the left hand you use to pump the back of it. And that's what gives it voice. And so I was just reunited with it. I had it in a storage unit for the two years that I was away in Hawaii and in California. But what's really cool to me is that I was gifted this harmonium by my friend Adriana, Art of Loving on Instagram. Adriana was on the show not too long ago, I guess, actually, maybe like a year and a half ago during tour season. But Adriana is a Taurus and is known for her embodiment through her voice, right? Taurus is the throat and the voice. And so it's really cool for me to remember that this harmonium that I use and this practice that I have was gifted to me from a Taurus who's known for her booming voice, is known for teaching others how to unlock their throat through kirtan practice. But the person that was storing it for me was Chase Voorhees, who was on the show last week, the creator of the Holy Spectrum Tarot, who's a Scorpio. And so when I interviewed Chase last week, I was at his house and he gave me my harmonium back. And it's, it's been the perfect tool for me to navigate the deep feels of this dark Scorpio season. So today I'm going to play the harmonium for you. So I 
would like to invite you to, you know, get your tarot cards out. You'll feel the energy of the Hierophant, the soul growth card for Taurus with, with the harmonium. So for me, meditating on tur- Taurus during Scorpio season really has helped to channel the deep feels and the grief that the Scorpio death rebirth transformation process offers us. And it's been through the power of chanting, through the power of the voice. This is Taurus, embodiment, divine wisdom. And so chanting and playing definitely connects us to the high vibe Taurus feels. It unlocks the throat. Hello, Taurus, right? It's also a very traditional devotional practice, which is the Hierophant. And so there's definitely for me this poetry that the two astrological signs that help me reunite with this practice during the season are connected to Taurus and Scorpio. And so this is the power of the Scorpio Taurus polarity connecting us to our material possessions. I got my harmonium and then using it as a tool for navigating growth and change and transformation. So our meditation today, I'm going to offer you a blessing and you can allow it to wash over you. And so the first chant, will be to Ganesh. Ganesh is the remover of obstacles. Ganesh represents new beginnings and is often depicted at the entrances of homes. It's the god with the elephant head and usually has some sort of flowers behind. And I think it's important, this feels very appropriate for me for this Scorpio season, also the Taurus full moon, because um, we always look to the rulership. So... Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. Pluto is in Capricorn and has been for some time. This is ruling. Capricorn's ruling over our Scorpio season, which means this is a season of transformation in relationship to, on a big scale, government and patriarchy. In our own lives, it's our relationship to our public appearance, to our career, our long-term vision, our most responsible self. And then Capricorn's ruled by Saturn. So to get an extra flavor that we then look to Saturn, Saturn's also in Capricorn. So there is that extra obstacles around all of these themes. So first we're going to chant to Ganesh, the remover of obstacles. So during this time, anything that you would like to um, release, you can imagine yourself um, moving through any obstacles that you might have in regards to career, public appearance, responsibility, sustainability, environmentalism. And then we'll call in abundance and we'll chant to Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, abundance, beauty, and prosperity. Uh, This is connecting us to the Venus side of the Taurus full moon. And Venus right now is in Sagittarius, which is asking us to be faithful and to hold the high vision. And so during this time, you can call in um, receiving abundance, prosperity, beauty into your life. So yeah, if you'd like, you could breathe into the throat and the neck, which is Taurus during this chanting. You could chant along with me if you know the words. And, or you could gaze at your tarot cards, whatever feels right for you in this moment is perfect. Either way, I just ask that you bring your awareness to your body and to your breath as we transition into this harmonium blessing meditation.
hope you enjoyed that little harmonium blessing meditation for your Taurus full moon. To break it down for you, the one to Laksh- Lakshmi, it's Om, right? Which is the sound that was present at the creation of the universe. It encapsulates all of us, Om, right? Namo, Om Namo. Namo is name, so it's the great name of the universe. Lakshmi, goddess of abundance. Om Namo Lakshmi, Om Namo Lakshmi, Maha, Mother, Devi, Goddess, Mataji, OMG. <laughs> That's pretty much what we were saying right there. So just honoring the Goddess of Abundance. And so whatever religion you practice, this is a offering and a blessing to you. And what an honor it is to be here with you, Taurus. We said rules over the throat, the neck, the shoulders. The soul growth card is the Hierophant. So we're going to talk about all of that, and you probably got a taste of that. But for now, let's, I'd like to update you on a few announcements um, while we're here. So I do have an offering update. This is exciting, and I'm thrilled to announce this for the first time ever, that I am now offering in-person astrology readings in New York City from my studio space as well as current transits readings. So I've been working as an astrologer for over two years now, since 2017, and I've dedicated my offering towards focusing primarily on birth chart readings. But as my practice and understanding grows, I'm ready to shed the layers of the old to make way for the new. And so because of this upgrade, I'm sad to say that I will no longer be offering personalized astrology podcast recordings If you purchased one of those, thank you so much for being here with me on this journey. I'm sad to see this part of my offering go, but it's the way that I'm transforming. I'm being asked to hold space in person now and over Zoom chat so I can connect more intimately with you all. And so I'm certain that this new format will serve you in a much more holistic and personal way. And so you can find new updated details on the website, astrologycousins.com. And because of this, I was able to lower the price slightly for readings because the recordings take a lot more out of me time-wise. And so now I show up and I have the 90 minutes that we have scheduled for you. I, of course, study your chart beforehand, but the recording process takes much longer because I have to process and upload and all of that. So, um, yeah. And also... To the first 22 clients to book this new offering by the end of 2020, or by the end of 2019, before we go into 2020, you'll receive 20% off. This is the cheapest I've ever um, offered my readings, and it's to kind of get the ball rolling here with this new in-person offering. So you can use the coupon code PLUTO when you go to check out, and that's for the first 22 people to book, and that coupon code expires at the end of 2019 and it's because I really want to hold space for you as we shift into this new decade. This is a powerful time. Mercury retrograde is a wonderful time to reinvestigate your birth chart and upcoming transits. But also as we shift into 2020. So I'm really excited to hold space for you in this way, either in person or over video chat. Again, visit astrologycousins.com. Use the coupon code Pluto. If the coupon code doesn't work, that means that 22 people have used the coupon code. So, um, yeah. I also am excited about this, a new offering update. Can you tell I have a Scorpio Midheaven with all these transformations? Last week, I gave in-person tarot readings for the first time in over two years. So when I, two years ago, when I switched to astrology, I put my tarot practice aside, which I'd been offering tarot readings for over five years. So I, I needed a little bit of a break from it. I'm glad I gave myself that moment to step back. And I have really felt this past weekend when I gave tarot readings, which I'm calling tarot healing sessions because they're a bit more than just readings, I felt the amount of growth and healing I've done and the amount of time that I took off from it. It really came through. And so I am I feel more ready than ever to be of service again through the lens of tarot as well. If you get an astrology reading with me, you get a splash of tarot. If you do a tarot healing session with me, you also get a splash of astrology. Both practices are really connected, but they are two separate practices. So for tarot, if you're looking for grounded reflection and insight and also healing on your journey, 
My tarot healing sessions are really intimate and ritualistic. We'll get the harmonium out. We'll chant together. Uh, we'll do some guided meditation, embodied health, and then we'll go deeper into your healing journey through astrology, our tarot. And so also this I'm offering in person in New York City in the East Village or via Zoom chat. And so you can find out more. You can go to brooklynfools.com for tarot. But also I've joined the two sites. They've come together. So... If you go to Brooklyn Fools, ourastrologycousins.com, which are both linked in the show notes, they'll take you to the same website. Which, while you're there at Brooklyn Fools, you'll notice that I'm offering a six-month journey through the major arcana of the tarot this January to June. And this, is, this will be my sixth year leading it. It's going to take a new format. Since I'm writing the Zodiac Queen's book this year, this is not going to be a in-person gathering or an online group forum, but you will receive 22 podcast episodes, 22 90-minute podcast episodes. And because it's not as intimate as the previous offerings. This is going to be the most affordable I've ever offered the Brooklyn Fool's Tarot Journey. And it will be a lot like this podcast, except through the lens of tarot philosophy. I have over six years of experience through this ritual. And so I'll guide you through altar building, through ritual, through deeper investigation into your own life, through different kinds of tarot methods and spreads and philosophy. We'll talk about all the minor arcana cards. We'll talk about all the court cards. And you know, I'm going to bring in my own flavor to it. We're going to talk about different musicians and actors and activists who embody the archetypes. We're going to look at, like, for instance, Yoko Ono's an Aquarius. So I'm going to talk about at our fool gathering, why Yoko Ono represents the Uranus side of the fool. So we'll talk about that. We'll get, we'll get really deep into it. I have so much to share, so many new downloads, and I'm excited to, to go deeper in this new way, in this 22-episode journey. So if you're wanting to learn more about that, I'm going to release all of the details and on Sag- when Sagittarius season starts, and then the Sagittarius new moon, I will open enrollment for that and there will be a limited number of spots and yeah so next episode i'll remind you that's when enrollment will open but if you want to stay in the loop with the brooklyn fools sign up for the mailing list for the show there's a link in the show notes i only send two emails out a month for the new moon and the full moon it will remind you when a podcast episode comes out it will link you up to any new announcements that i have and speaking of announcements we have a lot of them today uh So Aries book, I wrote an Aries book this past year. It's called Zodiac Signs Aries, and it's available for pre-sale now through Barnes and Noble and Amazon. If you'd like to dive deep into the soul-centered attributes of Aries and learn how this sign grows and functions in life, evolves through Libra, evolves through its other cardinal signs, Capricorn and Cancer, you can pre-order my first ever published book. Aries through Sterling Books, and it comes out in January, and I'm so honored to be included as a part of this new series of sign-by-sign guides alongside other contemporary astrologers in the community. So there's a book written for each sign. I got assigned Aries, so it activated my Aries North Node and my Mars in Aries, which felt really cool. And the final announcement is Patreon. So Patreon is a website, a service that allows for artists, mystics, healers to get compensated for their work. So since this podcast is a free offering from my heart to yours, I have a Patreon for the show. And so people contribute monthly to the show that really value the show and have the monetary compensation to do so. And so we have a new Patreon supporter this week, Beth Wilson. Thank you so much for contributing to Cosmic Cousins. It means the world to me that you tune into the show and value it enough to make a regular contribution. And to all of the other Patreon supporters out there too, thank you so much. Also, note to the Patreon supporters, if you're interested in the Brooklyn Fool's Tarot journey, I will gift you a discount on that journey based off of how much you've already contributed to the show. So if you've contributed $100 to the show, I'll gift you $100 off of your 
Tarot Journey, Brooklyn Fools 2020. Um, I do have one more announcement, actually. I've been participating in the November Tarot Challenge. So we're, what's today, November 11th? That's right. So we're like a third of the way through November. If you're looking to deepen your connection to the tarot this November, Chase Voorhees, who was on the show last week, the creator of the Holy Spectrum Tarot, is hosting a tarot challenge. And for me, with Scorpio season and Mercury retrograde, it feels like a really t- really great time for me to commit to a daily practice. I'm a little behind on the post right now because I've had some other stuff going on. But essentially, I've been pulling a card every day um, for the prompted questions for reflection and posting them on the Instagram. Uh, so if you are interested in joining that or just looking and seeing what the questions are for November, or if you're interested in following my journey, check it out. I'm on Brooklyn Tarot on Instagram and also Cosmic.Cousins on Instagram as well. I'll link both of my Instagrams up in the show notes too. And I look forward to seeing you on the IG. Taurus utilizes the power of voice to connect the collective to the divine feminine. Boom, boom, boom. (laughs) Taurus full moon. I value, I manifest, I receive. So expressing gratitude for your possessions is really important at this time. Honoring and acknowledging and bowing to the role that the physical world plays in holding space and offering comfort for you during this period of grief and transformation. So say what's up to your plants. I'm looking at the plants right now in here. I'm looking at my guitar. I'm looking at my harmonium, my clothes, all of it. Thank you for holding space for me. We need this earth for this water. You know what I mean? So expressing gratitude for your material possessions, expressing gratitude for your money, for your food, blessing it all up. This has given us that hierophant feel of Taurus. So Taurus is a hard working energy. So is Scorpio. All of our fixed signs, Leo and Aquarius involved with that fixed cardinal cross too. All very hard working. But Taurus Not only is it fixed, it's earth, there's also, and it's got Venus, so there's an enjoyment to it. Taurus likes to work hard, but also likes to enjoy. So there is this sensuality in receiving here. Taurus is also connected to loving up our bodies. I know for me, this past Taurus season, I'll never forget, I was walking through McCarran Park in Los Angeles, and I saw someone hugging a tree. I saw someone else literally bring their massage table out into the park to massage their partner. So we're healing our bodies on this Taurus full moon. We're feeling beautiful. We're accepting our bodies just the way that they are. So as we go through transformations, Scorpio, right? The internal transformations, the shedding the layers of ego, letting go of that part of ourself that no longer serves us, letting it, putting it to rest, letting it die, all of this Scorpio season, it brings us transformation. The Taurus full moon is a time where we get to reflect on our bodies, the physical world. Our actual physical outer world may also begin to transform as we make internal transformations. So the Taurus full moon reminds us to accept our bodies and that the internal transformations that we have been going through are also aligning us into this and activating us into this embodiment. Another soul-centered Taurus trait, manifest steadfast beauty through practical, reliable, and down-to-earth nature, deeply connected to all five senses, inspiring intimacy to the body through creativity and sensuality, transmutes physical desires into a living embodiment of generosity and deeper meaning. The Taurus full moon is reminding us all of that. So aligning ourselves with our values, we connect to the light and the beauty that we feel within, and then we radiate it out to the world. So we're taking a moment to really honor the body today and this week. Give yourself a squeeze. 
Give yourself a massage. Gift yourself a massage. Give your friend, your lover, your family a massage. Taurus reminds us this. Because it's been hard. It's been a hard season. Scorpio season, right? So really, you know, buy yourself nice flowers if you can. And it's not just about our bodies. It's also our connection with nature. It's our connection with the material world. Mindful shopping. Don't overspend on things that are, you know, gluttonous, are, are indulgent. It's a time of spending money mindfully. So I just happened to pass by a store yesterday called The Fluid Project, and that's fluid with a PH. And they claim to be the first ever gender neutral clothing store. I don't know if that's true, but I think it's cool. And inside they had some really awesome t-shirts and I bought two because if you bought one, the second one was 20% off. So, uh, I'm wearing one right now and it's green. It's like dark green, like forest green. And it says on it, homophobia and transphobia, homophobia and transphobia can be cured with education. So I'm wearing that today, aligning myself with the material world and my values and just be mindful of what I put on. So it's connecting to organic food, it's sustainability, all of these things is Soul Center Tours. The other shirt I bought says protect trans kids. So this is a time of aligning ourselves with our values and, and embodying that in the physical world. Connecting to nature, for me, Scorpio season, this came to me and I, I'm going to offer it to you because it could also help some others out there who might feel, you know, displaced because I didn't grow up in New York City. I don't have a place I can go to to mourn my relatives. So I found a tree by the East River that I really connected to and I'm using it as my connection with the spirit world. Having a physical place to go to to connect with spirit, with ancestors, really helps. So I've been taking flowers there. It's where I took my hair clippings from my hair healing session with Roxy Darling. Sprinkled my hair around the tree. I brought some flowers. Did that on the Day of the Dead. Now the flowers on my Taurus altar, I'll probably take back to the tree. I'll say some prayers. It's nice for us. This Scorpio needs that nature connection. It's why Queen of Scorpio, Georgia O'Keeffe, is known for her nature paintings. She's still reflective. She's still mystical. She's got all that Scorpio stuff. She wears all black, all of that. But she is reflecting on beauty, Scorpio evolving through Taurus. So find somewhere to go to in nature that you can consistently go to, the same spot, fixed earth, right? So find a tree to connect with or some other place. And the more you do that, This is very Hierophant. You can think the Hierophant card as a soul growth card for Taurus is connecting us to ritual and reverence of spirit through the material. And so the Hierophant, which is in a place of worship, the place of worship, whether, you know, it's a church or whatever it is that you, you go to, to worship, the yoga studio is for me. My altar is for me. This fixed earth consistency of having the same place that you show up to regularly helps to create that container for facilitating the grieving transformation process. So if you have this in your life already, honor the building or the place or the altar that you go to regularly, consistently. This is the consistency and stability of Taurus. If you don't have this, consider it. Invite it into your life. Find a place that you can go to regularly. And when you do this, you begin to receive messages from the spirit world. You begin to connect more profoundly, more deeply. You'll also, during this Taurus full moon though, Taurus is about the living. Scorpio is about the spirit. During this Taurus full moon, you'll receive messages from the living world. This morning, I was doing laundry. Because, you know, Taurus moon might invite us to do something a little bit more, what we could say, mundane, although my Virgo moon loves doing laundry. So I was doing laundry this morning before recording this, and there was an older lady that was in the laundromat, and I overheard her say to another lady, she grabbed her hands, and she goes, ooh, your hands are cold. And she said, cold hands, warm heart. 
Cold Hands, Warm Heart. This was the title of the speech that I gave at my grandmother's funeral. My grandmother used to say that all the time, cold hands, warm heart. And the whole speech that I gave at my grandmother's funeral, which feels very hierophant, is standing up in front of other people, proclaiming something about connecting to the spirit world and and building a bridge between spirit and material. I... I talked about my grandmother's hands. I talked about the way that she gardened. I talked about the way that she, you know, I imagine the way that she would fold laundry, all of these different things. But this was something that she would always say to me is cold hands, warm heart. So anyway, just this like very subtle message from the living world that connected me to my grandmother. So be open to that at this time. What in your physical world is connecting to you? Another way that this has happened to me is I've been walking along the water a lot. And it's become a really nice practice for me. Um, But I keep finding things on my walks, like pieces of paper or, you know, maybe you see repeating numbers like 1111. But the other day I found this piece of paper. It was black and it had a quote on it and said, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. It's a quote from Mick Jagger. And so... Scorpio season has brought me messages. So this gym that I found on my morning walk felt very Scorpio to me. Anything worth doing is worth ever doing. And then I looked up Mick Jagger's birth chart and I was prepared to faint if he was a Scorpio. I found out that he is not. So I'm good. But he is a Leo and he has a Taurus moon. Both fixed signs. And I think this quote, anything worth doing is worth overdoing, is, is going to apply to all fixed signs. Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo. There's a shared understanding of a stubborn obsession or a focus or a passion intensity with these four bold signs. And so Scorpio is in the emotional realms, of course. And also Taurus is in the earthly realms. It's so it's cool that he has a Taurus moon. We can feel into Mick Jagger's Taurus moon right now. And here we are. So... Have you been experienced this fixed modality over the season? So we're realigning with our values. We're also connecting to our money and our finances. Taurus rules over finances. Scorpio rules over um, other people's finances, our debt. So Scorpio, I release. I'm releasing karmic debt that I owe other people on my altar. I cut on my credit card. And I'm coming into my own sense of worthiness and deservedness. So I'm charging up the wallet. I'm looking at the empress receiving abundance for my hard work. So you're doing that too, releasing karmic debt that you owe other people. You're coming into your own sense of worthiness here on the Taurus full moon. We also were talking about how um, the Kazemi's happening right now, Mercury and the sun are conjunct. So it is this moon, full moon is activated through communication too. And also, it's always important to see what other planets might be in Taurus. And so right now, Uranus is in Taurus. Uranus is the planet of innovation, of social change and upheaval, technology, lightning, flashes of insight, all of this. Uranus entered Taurus last year, and it stays in the sign for about seven years. Uranus is the ruling planet for Aquarius. So this is... Also carrying this full moon is carrying this Uranian energy. So for some of you, it might be things are moving really fast. You get a sudden download on how to make new money. You get a sudden new job offer. There is an opportunity for you to really express this more socially progressive, radical side of yourself. And there might, I'm, uh, I'm feeling into the huge like opportunity for breakthroughs that a lot of us are having on this full moon particularly in regards to all the themes that we're talking about. The lower form of Uranus is feels like an anarchist that is just like ready to fuck shit up. Not saying that if you are an anarchist, you're low form, but it is this kind of like angst rebellion. So we could be feeling a little volatile. If you're like suddenly wanting to burn everything down, it's Scorpio season and Taurus is like, connected to material possessions and stubbornness, there could be this kind of element coming through with you or people around you. The higher form of it, though, Uranus is a socially progressive perception of the new age. Uranus, Aquarius, right? And it's in Taurus, so it's 
really coming into your embodiment and your power in regards to that. It could be connected to communities that you're involved in. It could be connected to technology. So just adding in this Uranian flavor, it's interesting. And so Uranus and Taurus, we can think, Uranus, I like to think of it like a spaceship and there's lightning. And then Taurus is share, so it's share in a spaceship. <laughs> so I don't know, what's coming to mind right now is like cryptocurrency feels like the age of Uranus and Taurus. I know that my roommate is into Bitcoin, that sort of thing. It feels like there could be some little downloads coming through about that too. Um, I don't necessarily dwell in that world as much, but it's coming to me right now. We can look at the tarot cards now. We've got ruling planet Venus. Venus is represented by Empress in the tarot and is often considered the mother of all the archetypes of the tarot. I'm feeling Lizzo with the Empress, right? Lizzo's a Taurus. We've also got, you know, Cher, Barbara Streisand. These are some other Tauruses. Adele, Kelly Clarkson. There is a very grounded, sensual energy connecting us to divinity within nature. It's open and receptive. It's giving, it's receiving. So the Empress is emboldened and powerful, and we can look at her as a ruling planet next to the ruling planet card for Scorpio, which is Pluto. Pluto is the judgment card, and it's all these people um, rising up from their graves. They're completely naked, looking up towards an angel that's waking them up with a trumpet. So the Empress is talking to judgment during this Taurus full moon and is saying, I know you've been going through a lot of transformation Pluto, particularly in relationship to your public appearance and to government, to career, to patriarchy. Can you take a break from that for just a moment and come into my garden and allow yourself to sit here on this couch? Grateful moon to be connected to the five senses and to food and to your body and to home and just being like on your couch, you know, just give yourself some break, some time off during this Taurus full moon. That's what the Empress wants to remind us. We've also got the fixed earth energy of Taurus, which is the king of pentacles. The king of pentacles is the most grounded of the kings. He has mastered the physical world as suggested by the lush surroundings. And he invites you into his domain and has food ready for you. It's similar to the empress, but this is a bit more about reminding us that commitment does not weaken or take away our freedom. Instead, commitment provide strength of opportunity. So if you commit to your community, your community will your community will support you. If you commit to your practice, your practice will support you. If you commit to truth, truth will provide for you a fruitful kingdom. It's this sort of vibe. And so the King of Pentacles next to the King of Cups, which is Scorpio, is reminding the King of Cups like, hey, you know, you hold a lot of space for emotion. You deserve to be paid for that. So this is a time for us to receive rightful compensation or to take a break from the waters and to be in the earth. Similar invitations of what I've already been inviting you into, but you can see how the tarot is acting as a facilitator for deepening our process of this. And then the higher font, of course, is the soul growth card for Taurus, which we've already talked about. But the higher font is representing um, the wisdom of gratitude in human form through ritual. It's the use of the power of the voice to share with others, to connect them to the divine. Taurus is learning to unlock the throat and to do this, to not just be about money and food and, you know, sex, whatever. <laughs> the Hierophant is saying, no, we're elevating it through ritual, through altars, through the temple of our bodies, our worldly possessions, even the gorgeous fabrics that we adorn ourselves with. How is this a reflection of the divine? So this is Taurus, living embodiment of the divine feminine. And when we look at it next to the soul growth card for Scorpio, which is the death card, we actually see the higher font in the Rider Waite Smith's version is depicted on the death card and is praying, is standing up towards death. And so for me, this has been such a powerful insight to receive during Scorpio season while meditating on Taurus is that playing my harmonium, having some sort of devotional form of worship to unlock my throat and to allow my body, my vessel to be a channel for navigating these realms has been really important and balancing. So we also have our queens. We got Georgia O'Keeffe, this mystical, dark, intense figure who wore all black. She made her own clothing 
which is very Taurus, right? She made her own clothing. This is Scorpio evolving through Taurus, even though it was all black. (laughs) She lived at the Ghost Ranch out in rural New Mexico. Connected, rural, nature. Scorpio evolving through Taurus. And she painted gorgeous landscape portraits. She painted flowers and bones floating in the sky. We feel this intensity, this transformation, this exploration of subconscious, Georgia O'Keeffe, honoring death, but through beauty, through art. Let's listen to a clip of Georgia O'Keeffe now. And the, the clip, I'm going to play a clip from Georgia O'Keeffe and a clip from Cher. And while I was watching documentaries on both of them, I found a clip where they both talk about red, white, and blue, about connecting us to nationalism and our country. And as Pluto's in Capricorn and we're feeling into this, we're coming into the new election year, I thought it would be appropriate. But there was just something about both of them talking about red, white, and blue, the colors of the United States flag. Um, but they talk about it in different ways. So you'll feel their, the Scorpio Taurus polarity through the way that they're talking about it. And so right now we'll listen to a clip from Georgia O'Keeffe. And when it was time to go home, I felt I hadn't started on the country. And I wondered what I could take home that I could continue what I felt about the country. And I couldn't think of anything to take home but a barrel of bones. So when I got home with my barrel of bones to Lake George, I stayed up there quite a while that fall and painted. That's where I began, that's where I painted my first skulls, from this barrel of bone. And first I painted the horse's head. And then I got this cow's head. And I had the cow's head painted against the blue. And I thought, well, I have to do something else about that. And that was at the time that the men were all talking about the great American novel, the great American play, the great American, oh, it was the great American everything. And I thought they didn't know anything about America. A lot of them had never been across the Hudson. So I thought, I'll make my picture a red, white, and blue. (laughs) I'll make it an American painting for these people that don't go across the Hudson. And this was my painting. I put a red stripe down each side. Entertained me, but I don't think anybody else caught on to it for quite a while. I love that like deeper kind of secretive sense of humor that Georgia O'Keeffe is displaying there. The Scorpio nature of that. Soul centered Scorpio harnesses subconscious rebellion to expand outside culture's predetermined box. So Georgia O'Keeffe's use of bones too. She has this quote where she says, the bones do not represent death to me. In fact, they're very lively. It never occurred to me that they had anything to do with death. They're shapes that I enjoy. So deep bow to Georgia O'Keeffe, our queen of Scorpio. I'll pull up her birth chart now and see what we might find here when we look at it. We already know she's a Scorpio sun, moon, rising, making her an intense or transformative little girl. Scorpio sun and the shadowy darkness of night, Scorpio moon, transforming darkness into light, Scorpio rising. When we look at her chart, she's got Jupiter in Scorpio, point of fortune, sun, moon, Mercury, all in Scorpio, all in the first house of self-identity. Then we always like to look to see where Pluto is in a Scorpio's chart. She has Pluto and Gemini. She's of that generation, which is a generation that brought a lot of new ideas. This is when the airplane was invented and the radio waves were sent, all of that. And, you know, we feel that in the way that she's communicating about darkness and light and also the way that she's communicating these new concepts and how we heard that it was the great American novel, the great American whatever, she says. And so this, this Pluto and Gemini generation, which she was born in 1887, so it was the end of the 1800s, was a time where there was a lot of uh, new thoughts, new writings coming out. Uh, and then what else stands out in her chart? I like to look to Mars, too, in a Scorpio's chart to see what's going on. She's got Mars and Virgo 
in her 10th house. She's got a Virgo midheaven and her Mars is in Virgo. So this means she's directing her ambition and her pioneering nature, her physical life force towards her career, her public appearance, 10th house, which she very much did. And in Virgo in a way that is at its highest offering a service to the community, but it is uh, committed to one's work, its devotion to one's craft, which she also definitely displayed in her life and in her work. And so what an honor it is to honor the life of Georgia O'Keeffe. Deep bow to our Queen of Scorpio. And now let's talk about Cher. Cher would be the polar side of the wheel, right? George O'Keefe and Cher are opposite, but opposite signs actually have a lot in common. And for me, if someone told me Cher was Scorpio, I'd be like, whoa, yeah, she is. I could feel that like intensity with Cher, but she is Taurus through and through. We know that. Uh, Taurus is all about sharing and generosity. And so even just her name, Cher, as Queen of Taurus, is connecting us to this word share. It's a little, literally, her name is a play on words. And that just occurred to me last week. So Cher as Queen of Taurus is, she's this prominent figure of feminine power who has had a very solid, stable, long-lasting career. And she utilizes the power of her booming voice and presence to empower us, feminine empowerment. She's connecting us to the divinity within through her work, through her offering. And she, you know, she's always having her comeback to her. She's always hanging out, working, but also enjoying life. She is known for her fashion, big elaborate costumes, but she's gone through very many transformations evolving through Scorpio in regards to her fashion, expressed her sensuality or sexuality throughout her career. Again, coming back to the throat, the voice, the booming voice, a lot of Tauruses will have this presence that comes through their voice. And it's it's solid, it's stable, it's fixed earth. And so let's listen to a clip from Cher, who, by the way, came from poverty. Taurus will often have some sort of connection to money. It doesn't necessarily mean that every Taurus is born poor or every Taurus is born rich. It's just a Taurus is consciously aware of that. So it comes to shape them. So if you are a Taurus understanding the family of origin and the culture and society that you incarnated into and their relationship to value and money will shape the Taurus's path and soul purpose. And so Cher became one of the richest women uh, performers of coming from poverty. And she's also, I learned this by watching this documentary, that um, she's the first woman to show her belly button on TV, which is pretty cool to learn. So let's listen to a clip from Cher now. And by the way, these clips that I'm sharing with you are from YouTube, and I'll give you a link to both of them in the show notes. And so this one, this, oh, sorry, Mercury retrograde moments. Um, Okay. This one is Cher breaks down 22 looks from 1965 to now, and it's through Vogue. I'll put a link in the show notes so that you can hear it. I'm playing it here on the show as research purposes so that we can feel the embodiment of this. But I just want you to know that the, I, I didn't interview Cher, so it's on YouTube. You can check it out. There's a link in the show notes to it. If you want to watch Cher breaking down 22 looks, it's very Taurus to go on that journey of transformation through fashion with her. And then the Georgia O'Keeffe clip is coming from Georgia O'Keeffe talking about her life and work. And it, um, she's at her home in New Mexico in 1977. She was nearly 90 when this was filmed. And so this is coming to you, uh, through red on the beach 22 on YouTube. I'll also put a link to that. And it appears to be that they took a clip from a Georgia O'Keeffe documentary so let's listen to this clip from Cher, and you'll also hear, so we heard Georgia O'Keeffe talking about how she put a bones in the sky with blue background, but then put red stripes down. So it was the red, white, and blue. And so let's listen to Cher talk about her breaking down some of her iconic looks, and we'll also hear the repetition of red, white, and blue. In this era, I could hardly take a bad picture. And all my clothes were fabulous, and I loved them, and I've spent pretty much all my time naked. 
Well, I don't remember exactly where we were in this picture, but this outfit that I have on, it's red, white, and blue, and I made it to go to England. So what stands out to me in this picture is Sonny's willingness to let me do anything to him. He would wear anything that I put him in. And he's wearing his bobcat. I wanted it, I thought it would fit me, it didn't, so Sonny got it. But I thought he looked really handsome in it. Oh, well, this is a big jump, isn't it? The big jump was I designed these and Bob Mackey designed that. So we can feel the down-to-earth nature I mean, Cher exudes this gentleness and this elegance, but it comes through with this really like profound sense of authority and embodiment. And, oh, we love Taurus. And one of my friends that is a Taurus with a Scorpio rising, Michael Brokeback Kerouac on Instagram was on the Taurus panel and happy rising self birthday, Michael. Um, shared with me, I think this was Michael that shared this with me. If not, I'm sorry that I misspoke, but someone shared with me that um, Cher was really into astrology and would even um, draw out charts. She'd cast charts for friends and she'd actually draw it out. And so um, it's cool to know that Cher is connected to astrology and that feels like Taurus evolving through Scorpio for sure. It's like going into the subconscious realms and esoteric practices. So I pulled up Cher's chart here, born May 20th, 1946. Of course, we got Sun and Taurus. She's on the cusp. She's at the 28th degree of Taurus. She's almost in the Gemini realm. And she's got Mercury and Taurus, so still Taurus through and through, but she does have Gemini energy coming through her in her chart. Her Venus is in Gemini, her Uranus and North Node are in Gemini. And she does have this incredible way with words. She's definitely a storyteller. She's one of our culture's greatest oracles, we could say, but it's coming through in this Taurus way, in this Venusian way. Also standing out for me in her chart, she's got Pluto and Leo. She's of that very creatively expressive generation, this bold-hearted generation. The majority of our queens that we crowned are from the Pluto and Leader generation. Uh, there is a royalty to this generation, and it's next to Mars and Leo in her chart. So this does, Mars and Pluto together, it feels a very warlike. So it's like her creative expression is coming through these intense ambitions and transformations. And she's also got quite a bit of Libra happening in here in her chart. She's got Chiron and Libra, wounds and relationships, but bringing healing to interpersonal dynamics and gender equality. Neptune and Libra, which is uh, delusions in relationships in a low form, but in a higher form, it's bringing and sharing spirituality and one-on-one -on -one relationships. Jupiter and Leo, uh, expansion in Libra, in Libra is, um, Jupiter and Libra is expansion with more Venus-like qualities, and so that feels very nice for a Taurus sun to have a Jupiter and Libra. This means that she's actually not just connected to the earthly realm, but she's connected to the intellectual and conceptualization of beauty too. I think of the Libra connection to Venus and beauty as um, really knowing how to curate a space and knowing where things look really good. And so this gives her a bit of the intellectualization to it too. She's got moon and Capricorn and is a cancer rising. So Cher is a sensual little girl to her son in an important business meeting, Capricorn moon, inviting us into the comfort of her home, cancer rising. And that's exactly what she does through her life and work. Deep bow to Cher for all that you've offered to us, our queen of Taurus. Happy Taurus full moon to you all. That concludes this week's episode. And... I'll just send you out here with a little bit of updates with transits before we close our time out. So we know that we've been in Mercury retrograde. Um, the Taurus full moon's November 12th. Mars enters Scorpio November 19th. So you'll kind of feel like the engines are revving a bit. We're, even though we're about to go into Sagittarius season, Mars is going into Scorpio. So we're going to start putting into action all of the transformation. We're going to start directing, carving out a path in regards to, you know, all that we have revisited over this time. It feels nice as we go into Sagittarius season. Mercury goes direct on November 20th. 
And then we enter into Sagittarius season, and it's a time of uh, faith and optimism after Scorpio season. It's a time of expansion, reconnecting to our spiritual practices. And so we'll get into all of that at the Scorpio New Moon episode. Right now, Venus is in Sagittarius, so we're already starting to feel that expansion. Uh, Sagittarius season starts Friday, uh, November 22nd. The Sagittarius new moon is Tuesday, November 26th. Thanksgiving, if you celebrate that, is Thursday the 28th. Just to give you kind of some ideas. And so I'll see you in two weeks, Cosmic Cousins, for our Sagittarius new moon episode. So enjoy your Taurus full moon. It offers us a moment of aha awareness with Uranus there just as all full moons do, but Uranus is giving us that extra flash of insight. And so uh, we're teetering between death and life here. Scorpio's death, Taurus's life, uh, between releasing and receiving. And so be open to insights and messages from the material world. Thank you, Cosmic Cousins, as always, for tuning into the show. The show would not be possible without you. Again, tarot and astrology readings available. There's a link in the show notes. Also, Brooklyn Fools 2020, January to June. Go to brooklynfools.com. Sign up for the newsletter to stay up to date. I'll be releasing all this information on the next episode of the show, the Sagittarius New Moon, Queen of Sag, Tina Turner. So, yeah. Thanks for being here. Taurus Full Moon blessings to you all. Take sweet care, cousins. And remember deep breaths.